YouTube, it's Sat. Welcome to Driver 81. You join me here in my garage where today I've got a little bit of a performance modification to do on my Porsche Cayman 987. Now the channel is called uh, renamed now Driver 81 Porsche because I've kind of realised that the whole channel really resolves around Porsche. Although I do get the odd car from time to time to do reviews on or DIY guides. So if you're new to the channel and you are interested in Porsche cars, I've got a Porsche Boxster, a Porsche Cayman and a Porsche 911. And I go out on random adventures so if it does sound like something you'd be interested in, please click that like and subscribe button right now. And a quick advertisement, if you are interested in a Porsche diagnostic tool, we highly recommend the iCOS or POR version 1.0 kit. It will cover any engine, ABS, transmission, airbags, post sip, uh, PSM, uh, oil service resets, you name it. I'll put the quick link to this kit directly below this video. So on to today's video. Well as the title suggests, I'm going to be doing the install of the uh, the IPD plenum and the GT3 throttle body on my Porsche Cayman 987. It's a 2006 Cayman S. Have a quick look. And this is the kit you will receive. Um, I've bought these separately, so I've got the, uh, this is the IPD plenum itself, and this is the tubing which comes with the IPD plenum. What sits in the middle here is the GT3 throttle body. Um, I didn't buy them all together, but I got the IPD plenum and the tubing from uh, Design 911. Now, uh, it costs, I'm just gotta check to see how much it costs because I can't remember. <laughs> It costs 550 plus the VAT. So you'd be looking at about 650 for the plenum and the tubing. Now the JD3 throttle body I picked up for about 110 pounds. Uh, so altogether you're looking at about 750 pounds for the upgrade. Now what I want to show you is, um, well first of all I'll show you the, the unit itself. This tubing here, which just slots on the end there, we need a, a Jubilee clip to go around there. But that is the tubing, I'm not sure how well you can see that. but. On the original unit that comes off your Porsche, this is kind of like in two chambers. So as you can see, this unit just has one big opening like that. And also the plenum itself, if you kind of look in there, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's in here, the, the bottom and the top, you've got like a, an almost kind of like a golf ball sort of situation going on. Now in the uh, the standard factory plenum, what you have here is like a butterfly valve going right through the middle and there's a lot more restriction there. So this is gonna open up that restriction, let the air flow a lot, a lot more freely in fact. Um, and sources say, now it depends on who you speak to. If you're, if you're speaking to somebody who's trying to sell you this product, they'll probably tell you that it's good for an extra 20 brake horsepower. Now. Um, I'm not naive enough to think that it will automatically give me 20 brake horsepower because you're probably going to need things to go along with that like maybe a remap, uh, maybe headers or the, or the suitable exhaust uh, to go with it. So I'm not jumping into this thing and oh yeah I'm going to get 20 brake horsepower extra but I am going to give it a try uh, and, I'll, and I'll see how I feel about it. My car is at the minute it's a road car. I haven't done many modifications on it. Um, what I have done is put the LED spars on, I've lowered the suspension by 30 millimeters, and that's about it. So this is probably, oh sorry, no, I'll put the Carnival exhaust on as well, the Carnival GT uh, rear exhaust. So this is probably the, I would say maybe the second performance modification that's going on the car. Um, once I've done this, I probably will go ahead and get the car remapped as well, um, and get it tuned just so that the whole car uh, and ECU can adjust to the new Plenum and uh, GT3 throttle body. So it's time now to see if we can go and get that installed onto the Cayman. Right, so we've taken the cover off the car. And as you can see, this is the standard plenum with the tubing here and then the throttle body is located further down the tube. So we need to make a start on getting all of this tubing off and then reinstalling the uh, the new version. All right, so a bit of a uh, progress update. Uh, so we've got, we've loosened two Jubilee clips here, two on this side as well. And we've 
loosened this, assuming some sort of ventilation hose. There's one there and one there, one on each side. Uh, a Jubilee clip down here. I've also unplugged the mass airflow sensor. I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure that's actually needed, but that's what I've done. So what we've really got to do now is work on getting this and pulling this completely out. Um, now this is the tricky part because I believe what we need to do is we need to sort of pull apart these rubber boot things here on both sides and then we should be able to lift this up. So let's crack on with that. All right, so we've pushed these right the way to the side as far as we can. Now this should just pull out. So I want to show you the uh, the old version versus the new version side by side. And this is what I was talking about earlier. So you can see inside here that we've got this kind of like butterfly valve, which is restricting airflow. And also, I mentioned this earlier, I'm not sure if you can show how well you can see. That's obviously the throttle body. But if we look inside there, you'll see it's kind of like a, a two sort of a two way chamber um, or two tunnels, if you like. Um, and that is also, you know, the air's still getting through there, but it's a little bit restrictive. Now the throttle bodies, the throttle body from the standard is, I think it's a 70, 73 millimeter size throttle body, whereas the GT3 throttle body is an 82 millimeter. So you're getting a wider hole, so more air can get into the, uh, the system. <laughs> All right, so the install is nearly complete. Um, a few things to point out on the way. Uh, a few snags. This vent here um, is very prone to cracking because when you're pushing the plenum down in order to line up with the silicone tubing, you can hear this kind of cracking. Now it's very important that you keep this out of the way and make sure that it doesn't crack. Now what I've temporarily done is put some cable ties in just to try and sort of keep it out of the way while I'm pushing this down and while I get the final uh, hose clamp on here. It's an absolute pain in the arse to get it all to line up, uh, but put your, you put your hose clamps on really loosely at the moment. And these are all on quite loose and I'll be able to move these as and when I need to. Um, this cable here, or this vent here, as you can see, uh, you've got two of these that go into the same place, the AOS here. Now, this is a blank off, this actually snapped. If you can see there, so normally what would happen is this would go over there, and then you would blank that off there with the blanking uh, plate that you get. But it doesn't really matter because it snapped, so I've just blanked it off further up the line. As you can see there, and sort of surrounded that with some insulating tape. Uh, this one here will go into, this one here will go into that one there. Um, electrical connection for the throttle body will plug into there once I've got it all lined up. Um, and then just sort of readjusting of the hose clamps to get everything in place perfectly. But the problem I've got right now is that it's just not getting it to place you can see the line there where this needs to line up to and it's just not quite there but I'll keep working at it we should get there eventually all right so we're all done now um, everything's hooked back up to the way I believe it should be um, take a good look at it this is basically what the final result would look like um, this shifter cable has to be rooted to this side of the plenum and the um, the tubing you notice here there's a tab which you've had to use these crimpers to actually pull up because we don't want to uh, potentially have this slicing right there. So we've had to uh, move that. MAF is now in place. Uh, the throttle body electrical connection is now in place. Uh, hose clamps, one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, now all in place. Um, blanking sort of cap is on there normally you'd probably see it somewhere over here because this tube would go over here but mine snapped as i said earlier so that's there uh, this one is in place there um what else is there well, that's pretty much it i think we're at the stage now where we can um, start the car up and hopefully 
um, hear the engine running and hopefully not get any check engine lights. Uh, but we can't guarantee it, so let's try it now. Now it is going to be pretty loud because I don't have the engine cover on. Um, so let's uh, let's hope for the best. Just put it into neutral. So initially we had a very high RPM of about 2,000. Car was shaking quite a lot actually. Hopefully it's just sort of uh, the ECU trying to adjust to the uh, the extra air that's going through the car. Uh, but I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to let this settle, let it run. Hopefully it'll settle down a bit. All right, so I've took it out for about a three-mile drive. Um, not really testing the performance of the car, but really just to try and get the uh, the airflow a little bit more regulated. And it seems to have worked because we now have a, although it's still fluctuating a little bit, um, a pretty stable RPM of around about six, 700 RPM there. Um, so I'm gonna let this run for a few more minutes. Um, and then what I'll do is um, we're gonna go and take it out for a drive now. They do say that it can take about between 5 and 50 miles for the ECU to fully adjust um, with the new airflow system that's in place there. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself cleaned up, take the car out for a long drive. Um, hopefully I'll see if I can notice some performance games. Obviously you'll be coming with me. So I've come back in the car now to take it out for a drive. And what's happening here is something completely different to what was happening earlier. And don't tell me it's not going to do it this time. You can hear that, it's kind of like... Now you see what's happening there. And what I've been getting, uh, I turned it on earlier and we had the check engine light. Now as it happens, it's not coming on right now. It might take a while to come on. It might come on and go off, I don't know. Uh, but it's quite ironic that I was talking about the iCarsoft POR. There it is there. So it's a flashing check engine light. As I say, it's quite ironic I was talking about this tool earlier um, because it's actually coming handy right now. So what we're gonna do is uh, go in and actually see if we can diagnose the fault or get the fault code at least. Um, I have read that the ID, IPD Plenum and GD3 throttle body combo can actually trigger a check engine light. It's gone off now. Uh, so we just need to get the codes and it could well be that there's still a leak, an air leak in the system somewhere. Maybe the hoses haven't been tightened or fastened as, as, uh, as strong as they should have been. So it is something that I am going to go and double check. Uh, but I'm just scrolling through here. DME, which is the engine, read DTCs, so it's giving us uh, one of seven fault codes actually. Um, that's the one which apparently is uh, throwing, being thrown for a lot of people who are installing this. Um, it can obviously give other faults as well, it's giving me faults on the uh, the cylinders as well. So what I'm going to do actually is just clear all of those and if there are any true faults in the system the true faults will actually come back. So it's telling us no fault code so I think what I need to do really is take it for a bit of a drive and then the true faults will actually come back and we'll, uh, we'll take a closer look. Yeah. 